Knowledge is the real power to overcome anything in your life, in your health, in your success. So you have every potential to right the wrongs of your health by literally knowing that it's all about how you choose to accept or confront or do things in your life. Your biography becomes your biology to communicate to you from spirit what's going on, what's wrong with you, what's wrong with your life, so that you have the intel to go out and do some changes. Make it right, make it balanced, because everything in your body has been a part of your life. It's a reflection of your life. When you're born, your body is literally your soul consciousness made physical. So everything you experience in life becomes an addendum of change to the physical body, to health, for good or ill. If good things happen, you feel elated. If bad things happen, you, you feel like your knees are rubber and you have to sit down. This is the, the effect of purposeful communication from spirit through health, telling you what you got to go fix, what you have to change your mind on, what you have to do differently to make spontaneous remission happen. Welcome back, beautiful souls, to Unleash Thyself. I am Constantine Moroon, and if part one and two of the conversation with Dr. Richard Leach left you wanting more, today's discussion promises to quench that thirst. If you haven't seen either part one or two of our conversation, I would highly recommend you go back and give it a listen. In our culminating chapter with the esteemed Dr. Richard Leach, we'll venture even deeper into the spiritual labyrinth of health. With the foundation laid in our previous episodes on healing with purpose, karmic DNA, and biosymbiology, today we focus our lens on discerning the intricate spiritual communications our body conveys. From understanding the symbolism behind everyday ailments like acid reflux to personal battles with sinus issues, this episode promises revelations that blend science and spirit connecting body and purpose. Today, we're not just understanding our very own health, we're decoding the messages of our existence. Let's embark on this final enlightening journey together. But before we jump in, if this podcast has been expanding your horizons, do us a favor. Hit that like button, subscribe to Unleash Thyself and leave us a review or comment. Your support is our fuel and it helps us continue to bring you game-changing content week after week. So let's get started. We've, we've been talking about karmic DNA being the, the cause of stressors in your life. And we talked about the nautical navigation of a buoy and a point, a lighthouse, and, you know, figuring out that the experiences of life caused by karmic DNA give you challenges that you go left or right, you either do well or you do poorly. And that causes the stress that, that will create the illness. And then biosymbology, it talks about um, how epigenetics is going to display whatever stress in your body. And of course, you know, then we look at your life history, your stress history is what actually was happening to you as we went along. So let's dig in a little deeper to reading the purpose of health through using biosymbology, life symbolic life science, and with a particular eye to identifying what it's talking about. What is spiritual communication is coming through and how do we use that communication as intel to figure out and solve a problem that is coming to symptom or is in symptom? And of course, the objective is to figure out where it is and what can we do about it? What, how can we change our attitude, actions, thinking to literally take its purpose away? And when we take its purpose away, we trigger the spontaneous remission of any disorder at all. So, so uh, you know, looking at that hub of how biography becomes biology, we'll dig in and say that there are some fundamentals that everybody should know. There's fundamentals that, that, that show you that your body is divided in sections. And, and the prominent one is divide the center line of the body, right, from the left and the right side. I mean, there's more to it. There's upper half and lower half and all this stuff. But basically, down the center, the right side of your body, anybody's body, feminine, masculine, doesn't matter, is about ambition and project. 
It's about your work life. It's about going forward, doing things, getting things done. The right side is the masculine side. But even in a female, it's the ambition side. It's the go-getters. It's, you know, all the things in your life that are project-oriented. The left side of the body is kind of the opposite. The left side of the body is all things related to sensitivities. You know, so on the right side, it's about strengths and projects. And the left side is about sensitivities and relations. So, so we can basically view the body from left and right and say, if we got a pain on the right side, it's going to be something about work. If it's got a pain on the left side of it, it's going to be something about relation, you know, and that starts us down the path to understanding that it's really communicating. And now the interesting thing is that each and every part of the body has its meaning and purpose. And so I'm going to start at the feet and I'm going to work my way up. So you start at the feet and say, well, what the heck, what are the feet? Well, if you viewed your body like a molar, a tooth, right? You have the crown, you have the body, and you have the roots, right? That anchor you into the tooth into the mouth, right? Into the bone. Well, very much similar, the body's the tooth. Your two legs are your roots. So right at the bottom are the, the roots of your life, okay? And on the right side is your masculine root, and your left side is your feminine root. So things to do with the right foot are going to be things to do with dad or parenthood. Or it, for a woman, it could be the way husband operates as parent. So this is give you a general interpretation. The left side is going to be about mom and motherhood. For the man, it could be how wife does motherhood, whether he's critical of it or not, and his symptoms in his. But it's also recognizing that it's your own roots, right? So it's your roots. So it's not just those players and what's going on with them and how you feel about them and how you judge or don't judge or concern for them. But it's realizing that on the right side is your masculine root, standing up for yourself, right? It's being true, standing in your truth. It's how you stand. It's the beginning of how you stand tall. On the left side, it's how you stand in a relation. You know, it's your romantic relation. It's the root of how you are in your sensitivities, in your personal sensitivities. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, this is going to be true. The, the, the next thing up is the, well, before I get to the knee, we're going to talk about the toes. You know what the toes do? Any idea of their function? They keep you from falling over forward. Okay, so they're extra balancing support. Okay. So the toes represent extra balancing mentors. So the big toe and the next to big toe, they're your grandparents on dad's side on the right, on mom's side on the left. And the other toes are ancillary supporters. I usually find myself in the next toe because I'm a counselor. I'm spiritually supporting that person and guiding them and helping them. So these are mentors, the other toes. And on the, whether that's a masculine mentor or a feminine mentor on the left side. So, you know, you, you, everybody in your life is in your, is in the different places in your body. You know, as we go up the leg, we find the knee. Now, what's the knee? It's a one-way joint. It only goes one way. So, it, you know, you, you start to realize the knee is about forward motion. So for you, the knee is about being enabled to go forward and do what you got to do. If you got a knee problem, you know, you don't know where it comes from. You wake up with it and you're going, oh my God, my knee hurts. And you're thinking, well, what the heck is that? It feels like I just ran into a coffee table. And in actual fact, you didn't bang it at all, but you have met some kind of obstacle either in project or your ambition on the right side, or in the left side, it's forward motion in relations. Could be any relations. Doesn't have to be love relation. You know, so, but then the knee, it represents people too. The knees represent siblings, peers, and children. So female siblings, peers, and children on the left, male siblings, peers, and children on the right. If something is upset and not going well with somebody in that category, that it's going to be a knee, a feeling of a knee problem. Okay. As you go up to the hips, the hips, you know, let's talk about the legs for a second and say the legs are your mobile foundation. Okay. 
the real foundation. Well, I mean, let's stop and say that the bones are the foundation of your life, right? The bones. If you didn't have bones, you'd be a pile of mush on the floor. So the bones are the foundation, but in a broader sense, in a, or, or, or in a less broad sense, you hone into different parts of the body. The bones are like the nouns. The parts of the body are like the nouns in the language of biosymbology, and the muscles are the verbs. The muscles do actions. So if you've got a muscle problem, a muscle upset sprain, it's about some action that was taking place or you needed to take place and you didn't, or you did take, you did do the action and you shouldn't have, you know, so, so this is starting to show you something there, but the, but as you get up to the hips, the upper leg is about pure potential. And you can see people who are really broad in their upper thighs and they've been sitting on their pure potential. In other words, they have, it's a reflection of whether they've gone really whole hog and got ambitious and done what they came to do, or they've been sitting around going, maybe I shouldn't, and I don't know, maybe I'm scared, and they're sitting on their pure potential. But you get up to the hips, and the hips are directly aligned to the second energy center, which is handling intimacy and security, and it also handles the reproduction system. So the hips are related to intimacy and security on the right it could be your own security, feeling insecure, or having a challenge as a male, or a female would be on the left, uh, your own security. But also, if, if you have a left hip challenge as a male, it could be something to do with your partner, you know. And if it's an ex, it's debatable whether they're still in your hip or sliding down to your knee. So, so the hips are about intimate relations right? And they're also the pivotal joint of your mobile foundation, right? Because from the hips, that's where your pure potential starts. You, you make headway. You go from here to there to do what you got to do and get your business done or get your relationships in order. So, so this is the mobile foundation of moving around. And then you get into the, the spine and each and every spine, we won't talk about them, but each and every spine. Hey, it's Constantine here. And I want to take a brief moment to truly thank you for being a part of this incredible journey of transformation. You are the reason we are creating this content. I see you and I appreciate you. Your support truly means the world to me. I want to ask you for a small favor. I'd love for you to join our mission by hitting like, subscribe or leaving a thoughtful comment or review. Your engagement helps others discover these insights and together we can continue to unlock the power of authenticity and personal transformation. And if you want to reach out directly to me, send me an email at constantine at unleashedthyself.com. I value any and all feedback. Thank you for being a part of this movement. Now back to the episode. Each and every disc has specific meanings that you can look up and figure out if you got a if you got a problem at T10 the doctor's diagnosed that it's a problem with a disc between T10 and T, T9 then you can look up that disc and say oh it has to do with something like that this is biosymbology pointing the way where do you look in your life for the goings on so the general theme of coming up the body is literally starting to show you that everybody is everybody's in your mobile foundation, everybody in your life, you know, and as you come up, you know, the Da Vinci drawing that has the arms yeah. out like this, you know, like they straight out to the side. Well, he knew a lot about energy. He had the arms sticking out straight out from the, from the throat because the arms do your bidding. This is the center of your will, the energy center, the fifth energy center, the energy of your will, your arms do your bidding. They're articulating arms. They reach out, they grasp life. Your hands grasp life. If you're having trouble with your fingers, your hands, your, your wrists, it's, it's because you're feeling that you're unable to grasp the situation, unable to get what you need to do done, stuff like that. So this is kind of a general synopsis of biosymbology as you go up the body and you realize how related it is to the energy system, you know? So in, in biosymbology, something I, I could share with the people is that everything we eat has been living. So if we're having upper GI problems, digestion problems, we're having problems with the BS that we have been forced to swallow, right? We don't want to process this. So the digestion system is directly related to your perceptions of life and how you feel about the goings on. It's why 
all of a sudden when something scary or upsetting happens, you got to run to the toilet because all of a sudden the digestion system goes, wow, I got to get rid of this fast, right? So when you do the digestion system, you, you eat food stuff, you do pre-digestion by chewing. So the teeth are part of the digestion system and each and every tooth has a meaning you can look up. If you've had teeth that are missing, you can figure out why they went missing and relating to the stress history. But as you look into the digestion, if you have an upper GI problem, you're having trouble swallowing the BS. That's literally the digestion that it is about. You don't want to have to swallow this. You don't want to have to agree or go along with this. And it gives you heartburn. Heartburn because you eat. It's not about what you eat. It's about how things are going on around what you eat. If you eat something spicy and things are going bad around you, you're really going to have the bomb go off in the stomach and it's going to come up and, and have acid reflux. So the acid reflux is basically not wanting to digest the life around you. If I may, that that's the first time in my life actually resonate with something along that line because I've wondered, I, you know, I'm 40 now, so I get more acid reflux than I did before. But sometimes I eat something... And it gives me reflux and sometimes I eat the same thing and it doesn't. And in my mind, I'm like, it doesn't make sense. I haven't changed anything. In fact, the time that I didn't get it, I should have gotten it because maybe it was closer to bedtime, at least in my mind, right? And looking at how this should show up. And what you're explaining now starts to make me. It's not physical. That's the thing is that it's not so much physical. It's not what you eat. It's about what you perceive around you. If you're good to go with the stuff that's going on in your life, you can eat anything. Go for the hot peppers on the submarine, you know, like it's cool because you, it tastes good and you like it and, and you can do the spicy things. But if you're in turmoil around you, you do the spicy things and you're going to have that response, you know, and it's not about, it's not about what you ate, it's about what's going on around you and how you're processing it. So here's what happens. The stomach, people think they digest in the stomach. Guess what? You don't digest in the stomach, you know, the stomach is an acid bath. The stomach is breaking down the food that you've eaten, right? It breaks it down into two components, good nutrients and waste. Bre breaks down the food stuff to, to a paste. I think they call it bolus. And so it then goes into the upper intestine, right? The upper intestine is where you're digesting. The upper intestine is separating the food from the waste. It's absorbing the food that you've eaten into through the walls of the intestine and back into the solar plexus to the other organs for refined digestion. And so you're taking the nutrients and allowing the waste to pass on through. But guess what? We're negative dominated. We don't like to let go of bad things. We don't like to let go of those ratty genes that make us look like hell because they're our favorite genes. We don't like to look, we don't like to let go of bad experiences. Hell, we go to cocktail parties and we share our bad experiences you know, and we bond over bad experiences. Oh, let me tell you, I had a similar thing happen to me. So, so we won't let go of the bad experiences. That means that all of a sudden we're having trouble in the upper GI or, or the, pardon me, the upper intestine, because it doesn't want to let the waste pass. It's symbolically holding back. You have uh, upper intestine problems where you're having uh, stomach pain and you're having uh, constipation and you're not wanting to let go. And so, you know, this is what happens at, you, you, you break down the food, you digest it. You're, the stomach is in the solar plexus. This is where we analyze life. We, everybody thinks they analyze life in the brain. They don't. They analyze life in the solar plexus. That's why when you get upset, you have to go to the bathroom. That's why we have ulcers in the solar plexus because we over worry, overthink. You know, we analyze life in the solar plexus. That's the analytical chakra. And so, so while we're analyzing life in the solar plexus, the stomach is in the solar plexus. It's breaking down the foods and it's dividing the food up into nutrient and waste, good memories and bad memories. We're supposed to forgive and let go of the bad memories, right? But we don't, we hang on like they're good things. Like we're going to share this at the next cocktail party. So, so basically it gets in the upper intestine and we don't want to let go. We have we have digestion problems in the intestine. We have abdominal blockages. We have irritable bowel. We're hanging on for dear life to the bad stuff. We got to forgive and let go. And that's what's happening in the solar plexus. We analyze life and we choose to keep good memories and we choose to forgive and let go bad memories. And that allows the rest of the digestion system to properly work. And so 
so nutrients are absorbed and the waste goes on through and it gets to this, the lower intestine. And guess what's happening here? Body waters, right? Now you, now you've taken a lot of nutrient out. It's, 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 it's a lot of water. So body waters are going to get absorbed through the walls of the lower intestine, right? And the, the, and, and let the waste pass on through drier, right? To be eliminated. So what are, what are water? What, what, what's water symbolically? Water represents emotions. So you're basically taking, absorbing in digestion, memories of life and emotions of life that came with it. You're absorbing those components and they're going back into the other parts of the solar plexus to the refined digestion of the, the spleen, the kidneys, the liver, the pancreas, and they all have a specific type of processing to do. The pancreas regulates blood sugar. If you're very cynical of life, you're going to, you're going to, your pancreas is going to regulate blood sugar to represent how bitter you see life. And they'll think the pancreas is broken. It's not broken. I got three cases of diabetes that returned to normal because we fixed how bitter they saw their life, right? We literally figured out that all the bad stuff they were holding on, letting, not letting go. They were cynical. They had to change their whole attitude and lifestyle uh, thinking because that allowed the pancreas to regulate blood sugar sweeter or it couldn't go the other way. It, it, the pancreas will regulate blood sugar properly if you're processing life properly, right? So, so this is all the digestion system. And, and as I said, I mean, this is symbolic. Everything is symbolic. Everything in the body processes symbolically about the biography that you're living, right? So, so we're talking about this, all this stuff, and it's, this is kind of a overview. I mean, everybody should know that the digestion system is how you're handling your life. I mean, that's like St. John's ambulance to me, you know, <laughs> like that's that knowing that, that you're having acid reflux or you're having bowel problems because you're not handling your life and you're not processing your belief and your experiences very well is your first line of defense because it's, you are the one in charge of what you think. You can be born in a communist country and they can monitor everything you speak, but they have no idea what you're thinking. You're the only one in charge of your thoughts. They're your domain. So you have every potential to right the wrongs of your health by literally knowing that it's all about how you choose to accept or confront or do things in your life. So, you know, with that being said, you did have mentioned that, I mean, I gave you a bit of overview. You did mention that you had a specific problem, I think, with your sinus. Yeah, something that's been pretty much on and off, but mostly on most of my life. Right, right. Well, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to tell you about this, and that <clears throat> it's quite interesting. I'm glad you actually had this to bring up because, you know, a lot of people suffer with sinus problems, right? And I got to tell you, as a scuba diver, I was already well versed in understanding the inner ear, the eustachian tube, and the sinus cavity because you know it's a part of diving that we have to care for our the pressure that goes on in our head. So if you've ever dove into a pool ten feet, you know the pressure builds up very rapidly, right? And I'm going to tell you that it's funny because medicine for a long time, I don't know, it may even still regard the sinus cavity as, as kind of leftover useless space. In actual fact, it's part of the pressure regulating system. A scuba diver has mask with a rubber nose that he can pinch his nose and blow out his ears. Okay. When he's at depth, when you're going down, I'm a diver. When you're going down, you know, as you go down, you're, you're, you're pulling your, your cord to let the air out of your BC, your buoyancy control device, and, and you're slowly sinking and you can feel the pressure building up your ears and you squeeze your nose, blow out your ears and equalize the pressure. So the sinus cavities are all about equalizing pressure, right? That when you, what happens is you station tube between your outer ear and your inner ear and the sinus cavity are pinched at both ends. When you hold your nose and blow, you open the pinch and equalize the pressure in the cavity as to the pressure that's outside. And that's how we divers can go down a hundred feet. And at a hundred feet, it's just like we were up on the surface. We got no pain, no pressure, no nothing because we've equalized the pressure in the sinus cavity. Now, what does it mean if you have sinus problems? 
perhaps you're not handling the pressure in your life very well. You, you know, like you, you've got pressures and you don't know what to do with them, you, you know, and it comes and goes. Sometimes you've got a problem with your sinus, sometimes not. Well, guess what? <laughs> Examine what's going on around you, you know? And so I, I'm telling you this to give you the experience, the understanding that there's a function and it has to do with your biography. Your biography becomes your biology to communicate to you from spirit what's going on, what's wrong with you, what's wrong with your life, so that you have the intel to go out and do some changes, you know, yeah. make it right, make it balanced. I'm going to treat you to the writing of bio biosymbology. I've, I've explained it in lay terms sort of thing, uh, and I can tell you that all the writing I've done for 20 years in here is not all in my head. So even I have to go back when I have a client with this or that, I have to go back and sometimes reread to get to remember the finer points of, it, of a stuff. Right. But the sinus is is not long. So it's you know good to do. So basically it's under head sinus cavities. And as I said, biosymbology is directly related to medical science. So the very first part is anatomy. And so I'll read to you what science knows about the sinus. It says, the sinus passages are an intricate matrix of airways lined with mucus producing membranes surrounding the eyes and the nose in and outside of the skull. They're connected to the inner ear as part of a mechanism in which enables the exchange of oxygen and pressure regulation to equalize external pressures on the brain. Matching internal physical pressure to changes in external atmospheric pressures when we're moving to high altitudes in an airplane, for instance, or in submergence in water as a diver is a physical survival mechanism. They cleanse the nose, add resonance to the voice, and partially determine the structure of the face. Now, sinus problems, biosymbology. Sinus problems are reflective of sensory knowledge, of disturbances from the ears, nose, eyes, and third eye, where perceptions perceive internal or external pressures and imbalances within life circumstances. As such, sinus difficulties represent concerns and or inability to cope with perceptions of pressured life circumstances. They're may be perceived persecution or pressure of repetitive irritation from circumstances or other people that may be real or imagined. Such external pressures may be easily handled, but are somehow perceived as too great to overcome, unacceptable, or just undesirable circumstances to cross in your life. So as a result, there is personal resistance to face these challenges that are presented. Personal position on an issue may lead to considerable restriction of actions taken and forced inability to handle the pressures of life. This symptom may also be exacerbated by judgmental, over-discriminating personal position resistant to the current of life circumstances unfolding. This symptom is about personal resistance to pressure or incongruent attitudes with the flow of life that is seemingly uncontrollable as it's underway. There may be self-imposed pressure over self-judgment for imperfect performance when expectations were too high. If the condition is chronic, there may be ongoing hypersensitivity to external criticism or circumstances that are constantly or intermittently applying personal perceptions of resistance to life pressures on a consistent basis. At the very least, there is a perception of being squeezed into an undesirable circumstance that must be confronted resolution of positive acceptance. Now, right sinus problems separated from the left would be this. When the symptoms are localized to the right sinus, it is far more likely that the undesired pressure will be discovered with masculine interests or masculine people or in the 
ambitious circumstances of life, of career and workplace and project, etc. The left sinus problems, when the symptoms are localized to the left sinus, it is far more likely that the undesired pressure will be discovered with feminine interests or feminine people or in the sensitive circumstances of life or family or friendships and relations, etc. So there you have it. The sinuses exposed and, and the meaning that they're bringing to the party where this is a spiritual communication from spirit from your higher self, from your soul, or from guides who are, are, are with you constantly that implement the communication that says you got to go do something differently. And I, I mean, a lot of that resonated, if not most of it. I mean, I still have to go back and listen to that. But I mean, I was smiling as you were reading parts of it because I'm like, yeah, that I can see that. It's bang on. This is the science of bioenergy therapy, and it's detailed. It's a, a very articulate, accurate science, both in life process or life uh, purpose and, and health purpose. And as I said, knowledge is power. Knowledge is the real power to overcome anything in your life, in your health, in your success. And so it's a wonder that I don't have a lineup out my front door with people waiting to see what they need to know about their life, about their health, about what's going on with them. You know, it's only because of outreach. At one point, I mean, I moved from the GTA just before COVID to Cambridge. And so COVID clamped down and a lot of my work is personal. A lot of my outreach is from health shows. There was no shows. There's no way to rebuild the practice. I still have some clients that I'm doing Zoom work with. And I, I will continue now doing Zoom work a lot, but because it's I'm global that way. But the interesting thing is that when I came here, I focused on creating the course, the practitioner's course that kept me busy during the first couple of years of COVID. And I haven't found the time and things are starting to open up. There's shows and I haven't found the time or the incentive to to go out and do shows to meet the public again. But more often than not, it's like people will refer me in, in my uh, peak of my practice over the quarter century. There was a point for a long time when I had a full schedule. I was working 14 hour days, three days a week and half days on Monday and Friday. But the thing was, is that I had a full schedule and a wait list of over three months of people who wanted to do it. And, and un unless I keep going out and meeting the public and sharing what I know, I don't have that. I don't have that, that constant return on on new people coming in. And if I've done my job, they don't come back. You know, if, I, if I've done my job and fixed the situation, you know, they it might be two years before they call me up and say, "I got a new problem." Yeah, it's about equipping them with the right tools, like you said, right? And understanding of the challenges so you yeah. can spot them and and be on your way. And that's true because when I'm working with somebody, I'm working with certain objectives for their health, for remedying a situation or helping them. But I'm constantly trying to educate them. I mean, I'm constantly teaching them. I, I'd rather give them the ability to fish, not get, just give them a fish, Absolutely. you know? And so, so um, I'm teaching them how to do a better life and, and apply the knowledge. And yeah, they'll call up and, and they say, I, I need a session or two because I, I got some things shifting and I don't know how to take it. I don't know how, how to perceive it. And, and it's starting to bother me. So, I mean, these, these, this is how it works. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Richard. And I was going to say, right, with what we're doing today and leveraging social media, right, the work can get out, right? So it's not tied to just physical locations. And like you said, this can be done over Zoom. This can be done virtually. As long as people speak English, there's no communication problem. I can work with anybody. And I've worked in Europe. I've worked in, in South America, in Mexico, various places in the U.S., California, New York. I've worked across, I actually had, before I was doing electronic, I had a woman who came from New Jersey to see me. And she stayed with her, her daughter here while she saw, we, we did phone sessions back in the day. We did phone sessions for a number of weeks and, and she had horrible memories from Auschwitz and we solved her issues with those memories and got her released from that horrible situation. And so, I mean, there isn't anything that can't be overturned because 
in that particular situation, I don't often say this because I want this not to be necessarily just my personal ability. I want it teachable. I want everybody to be able to do it. And I can't necessarily teach somebody to be channeling. But there are lots of times when I'm in session, when I find myself saying words that I, I didn't create. You know, I'm, I, I, it's a live wide awake channel. And I think, oh my gosh, write that down. That was good. So, but I, in her case, I was able to make sense of the whole Holocaust to release her. And that's huge information for, I mean, I'm talking about make sense of purpose. Why did it happen? And the history and the understanding and the honor that those people perished in honor. I mean, it's a longer story. I can't really tell, but the, the phenomenal thing is that everything has purpose and reason, good or bad. Bad things have reason, purpose, spirit. And I mentioned earlier that spirit actually through 9-11 to create global compassion. It's a component, a necessary component of our transition in a new millennium. And we could take 500 years trying to create global compassion to the extent that 9-11 caused it. There was people everywhere sobbing. There was people gut-wrenched at the thought of what happened with 9-11. And yet it had purpose and reason and divine intervention at its best. Tell me, the, oh, what was it, 75,000 people were at risk in those two buildings? 75 or 95? I don't remember the number now. Thousands of people at risk in those two buildings when it happened, and only 2,700 are dead, and 700 of them were firemen who ran into the building. Tell me there wasn't a lot of divine intervention in this event that shook the world's compassion. It had the effect it was needed to create. It warmed New York City. Murder capital USA, come on. I mean, New Yorkers look out for each other now. In Before 9-11, I mean, if they saw something happen in a mugging, they'd, they'd turn and go the other way. I don't want to be involved. It changed things. So you look at it and say, wow, purpose. Understanding the purpose of anything is the path to solving the ongoing effects of trauma. It's just not focusing on the negative, right? It's focusing on perhaps the positives you can take out of it, no matter how terrible it is. And I know that's hard to even wrap your head around and accept, but looking back at my life, and I didn't have overly terrible things happen, but even the, the worst of the worst, when you look down, yes, you can find positives in it. But it's tough in the moment, and it's tough if you are not aware that's something you can look for and you can accept. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, there's lots more to the story of the two world wars that I dredged up from channel to help this woman. And, and it's amazing. And it's, you know, I'm in no way anti-Semitic. There's no way. I grew up calling my parents friends, aunt and uncle, and they were Jewish, you know? I mean, they were close friends, they were family. So, I mean, but by the other hand, by the same token, I can see the world process of the events where spirit through the first world war and everybody went home afterwards and there was no global compassion. What did they have to do to create global compassion to, for the late the last stretch of the journey to the 2000? What did they have to do? They had to throw a Holocaust. And how did, when was that planned? Think about that. The Jewish people were never allowed a homeland. They're God's chosen, never allowed a homeland. Seriously? How does that equate? So you look at it and say, they were purposely nomadic and moved around the globe. Everybody knew Jewish people. So when the word started coming out about the atrocity, everybody had it hit home, right? Like Abe down the block made my dad's suit and I play with his son. And what are they doing with the skin and lampshades and gloves? I mean, like, oh, it shook the world, the Holocaust, and created global compassion. What came from that? United Nations. What came from that? UNICEF. Save the children. You know, like it exploded. And no more do we stop looking across the pond. You know, after the First World War, it didn't have the effect spirit needed. But from the time they said no more human sacrifice, there was one more human sacrifice if needed, the ace card to wake global compassion. And it was prepared. And it was honored, honorable in spirit for people, Jewish people. You know, they, they can hold their heads very high because they changed the path of humanity forever. 
Yeah, that's a powerful way to look at it. Lots to think about that. I you have know, a three eyed, right? Like I'm mean, like the emotions that come through and I like, just thinking about that. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it was brought to me in channel for this woman because she was still struggling so hard with years of memory from Auschwitz where she watched her parents perish as a child. You know, so I mean it, it helped her, it released her, it brought her peace to understand that it wasn't just for not. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what therapy should look like for everyone, right? Be able to go to the bottom of it. And like you said, don't shift the blame. That's right. Because it's not going to heal you. That's going to treat those symptoms, maybe temporarily, who knows, maybe part of them. Exactly. Finding and solving the purpose, changing your mind, that's healing. You know what's interesting here, though, in everything you talk, you talk about this choice, right? You're guiding them to find their own answers, to find the healing, to find that choice within yes to get to the answer right yes and that's the power in this it's like you don't have the magic one that says okay you're fixed now they have to do it and if they don't like you said right then yeah that's, I, much that's something i teach a lot is you know to the practitioners is that the medical model and the alter, alternative medicine model are not that dissimilar they both come to the person and say i understand your mechanics, and I have a bag of tricks that I'm going to give. Now, medicine has pharmaceuticals and surgeries, okay? But alternative medicine is not that different in that it has physical intervention with herbs, with techniques, with treatments. You know, even energy treatment that I give is just physical intervention until I find the cause. When I find the cause and I do phys the, the energy treatment, I purge it out and it can't come back. Because your mind is in your aura, right? So these things are hanging out, right? And when you solve the puzzle, they will slowly dissipate. But if you do an energy treatment, it's rapid purge. Very interesting stuff, Richard. Well, I mean, it's been so beautiful to talk to you for over three hours. For those that have made it this far, I want to thank you so much for listening. And of course, you know where to find Richard by now. Everything will be in the show notes. Before we end, Richard, is there anything else that you'd like to talk that we haven't covered? Of course, we cover so much in these multi-part multi episodes. And of course, people know where to find you and work with you and take your course. But is there anything else that maybe we haven't had a chance to talk about or you want to emphasize more? Um, well, I have various websites. I mean, I talked about karmicdna.com to, to look at a, a sampler of your karmic DNA. Anybody can go there freely. Um, I have epigenetics.com, which tells the story of, of epigenetics and understanding that if they, if they wanted to brush up on what they heard. I have bios, biosymbiology.com. I have a book on Amazon. It's using, using epigenetics to heal your life. That's the name of the book. And it's written for the average person and gives a, a pretty good look at things that they can do. There's parts where they can actually question themselves about what they do and what they think and stuff like that. It's not a substitute for real counsel, but it's a starter kit, you know, then the book is on Amazon and it's under Richard Leach, PhD. And, and so, cause I know that there are other, you know, stuff out there, but the, the various websites I have all tend to be educational, you know? And, and so the real key is if you want to know more, if you want a, an email from me, richard at bioenergytherapy.com is reaching me directly and I'll read your email. I'll make whatever comment I can or help you find a, a time in the schedule to, to have a session or set up some sessions. And, and, you know, that's me in a nutshell. Thank you, Richard. I mean... As I said, I knew about your work for a while now. I, I did a bit. I mean, I, I dug into it quite a bit and I still learned so much today. So I want to thank you for that. And thank you again to the audience for listening. And you know how to find Richard now. So please hit him up if this resonates with you. Do some more digging. And I promise you, at least, you know, from my point of view, once you sink in, once you look at it, it's very hard to, to look away because... In my case, as a mathematician and someone that has it's in computer science, if something or if there's too many coincidences, something is there, right? Something that you need to maybe dig a bit deeper in. 
and that's how I feel every time we talk, Richard, every time I, I look at the work you do. Well, thank you. And, and you're welcome for that. I mean, I'm very happy to have spent the time with you sharing what I know, because I know what I've shared today will likely change a vast number of people's lives, even if they never talk to me, because it's, yes. the, there's a growing, there's a growing education there that, that in the back of their mind, you can't unhear what you hear, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Like you said, it's, it's, it's going to stay within your aura. You may not remember it tomorrow. You may not remember it the day after, but it's going to yeah. come back. And you may not you even remember. be able to repeat the information to a friend or family member. You know it inside you, you know? And you and and then you also know where to look to get more information. Exactly, exactly, Richard. Well, thank you again. You're very welcome. Well, thank you for getting this far into our journey. And with that, our transformative expedition with Dr. Richard Leach draws to a close, at least for now, as I'm sure he'll be back for more in the future. Through the triad of karmic DNA, biosymbiology, and healing with purpose, we've unveiled the hidden dialogue between our bodies and our spirits. The learnings we've unraveled are not just keys to better health, but gateways to deeper self-awareness. We have transcended traditional boundaries of understanding, moving from mere existence to living with profound purpose. I hope, like me, you're leaving this series with a richer sense of self, poised to harness the messages your body conveys. Until our next journey, continue exploring questioning, and unleashing your truest potential. If this series has resonated with you, please consider sharing it with someone who might benefit. So here's to health, understanding, and boundless growth. Farewell for now, beautiful souls. Thank you so much for joining us on this exploration of personal transformation. Your presence and engagement are at the heart of what we do, and I sincerely appreciate you, your time, and thirst for knowledge, inspiration, and empowerment. Please consider showing your support by hitting like, subscribe, leaving a comment, or writing a review. Your engagement not only fuels our mission, but also helps others discover these insights. For more daily guidance on personal transformation across the mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical realms, be sure to visit our website at unleashthyself.com. You can also find us on Instagram at Unleash Thyself Today, TikTok and YouTube YouTube at Unleash Thyself, and there we post daily content designed to inspire and empower you on your journey. If you have any specific thoughts, questions, or feedback, I truly value your input. Or if you'd like to have a conversation with me or work with me, please feel free to email me directly at constantine at unleashthyself.com. I would love to hear from you. Together, we're building a community united in authenticity and purpose. Once again, Thank you for being a part of this movement. Until next time, continue to embrace your true self and live a life on purpose, with purpose. See you in the next episode.